Hi there, my name is Daria. Welcome to the demo of the Iguana Capture software for cultural heritage and archives. The software allows you to manage the entire capture process from A to Z. Today, we will take you through some of the key, most exciting features of the software, all the way from scanning and image capture to image processing, including splitting, stitching, cropping, clipping, image enhancement, and all the way to indexing and adding of metadata. So the first thing we're going to do is log in. I will log in as myself. I will add my username and password. As you can see here, I can select my language. The system supports multiple, multiple languages. Uh, I'm an English language speaker, so I select English. Then I log in. So now that I'm logged in, the first thing that I will do is create a new batch. So let's open a new batch. I have a book that I would like to scan. The name of the book is Sapiens, so I give my batch, in this case, the book a name, Sapiens. I select the document class or type, it's a science book, so I'll select science books. The priority for processing this book is high, I will leave it like that. And here, what's very important is that here I can actually define the entire process workflow. So that means the operators that will take care of this batch, the tasks that they will perform on this batch, and the order in which they will perform them. Okay, let's create the batch. All right, now I created the batch. What I can do now is either scan the book, and I can scan them from different scanners, different devices, or I can import from a directory. In this case, let's go ahead and import. Now I will select the images I would like to import, okay. As you can see, the images are now being imported. So we have nine images here. What I can do with these images now is, for example, see what has been imported or scanned. So here are our images. I can also change the thumbnail size. So, you see, I can change any way I like. I can also select a particular image. Let's take this one. And now with this image, I can rotate it. I can flip it horizontally or vertically. As an example, let's flip it vertically. The other thing I can do is I can rescan the image. I can mark it as blank, for example. Let's take another image and show that we can also delete it if we like. So I will mark this one as deleted. I can also reorder the images simply by dragging and dropping. So let's take this image and I would like to reorder and move it here. You see it's reordered now. And I can also insert a new image if I like. Now I will show you how we can do cropping and clipping. So let's select our image to start. Just double click. Now if I would like to crop and clip this image, I click here. Now what I will do is I will apply a mask to the first one, like this for example, and to this one. And actually you have the flexibility to move these as well. So it's very easy this way. Now what I can do also here, now that I'm happy with my masks, 
what I can do is actually assign these images to the same document group. So let's assign it to one group. This means that they will be added to the same document for further processing. If I'm happy, I can just click, click on crop or because we have seen from the thumbnails that a lot of the images are very much the same, I can actually select to repeat the same cropping and clipping on the next images. So let's click on repeat. I click on crop. Okay. Now I can preview my cropping. If I'm happy, I just click confirm. And as you can see here, the two images that we had just cropped and clipped are part of the same document, image 10, image 11. Now I'm already on the next image. As you can see, again, it's the same thing because I said that I want to repeat the crop is made and I can click again, confirm and continue. Or if I like, I can actually apply the same settings to the entire batch automatically. And of course, afterwards, quality control supervisors can check whether the cropping and clipping is okay. So I will just not select this now. I will just click confirm and the cropping is done. There is also another way of, to do cropping and clipping. I will show you this now. So again, I click here. And in fact, right now, I have an option to do this with lines. So if I look at this image, I can already see that I have certain ways in which I can crop and clip using lines. So I decide that I want five horizontal lines and one vertical line. And now it's very easy. What I do, I go like this, one, two, three, four, five. Now that it's done, if I'm happy, again, I click on crop and I can also again repeat this on the next image or apply the same style to the entire batch. Click repeat, click crop. Again, I can see the preview. And if I'm happy, I click confirm. And now all these images have been cropped right here. Now I'm going to show you how to do splitting and stitching. So let's start with splitting. First, I will select an image. Let's take this one. And now I go to splitting. I click split. The center of the page is automatically detected. So this line, if, we, if we're not happy, we can always move it around. And we can also, if we like, we can also change the thickness of the split line. So for example, if you have some extra shadows and so on that you don't like, you can actually change the line thickness. But we can leave it like this at this moment. It's right in the center. We are happy. Here we also have an option of deciding whether we would like to keep this split on the next image to repeat it. We can also apply the same splitting to the entire batch that we're working on automatically. That means that the operators can go very fast and then, of course, the quality supervisors will be able to check uh, whether all the images are split correctly. So I can always choose to repeat it on the next image and I can also choose whether I would like to keep the original non-split image. If I don't want to keep it, I can remove this checkbox. In this case, it will appear as deleted, but you always have an option to undelete it later. So the image, the original image is actually never completely gone. So let's go ahead and split. I will click on split. 
Now I can see the preview. If I'm happy with the way the page is split, I confirm. And here you can see right away that we have the left and the right page. So that's the splitting. Now what I can do, I want to stitch these two images together. So in fact, I will need to select the first image. So let's say the left image and the right image. And then I simply click on stitch. And now here we have the stitched page. And the left and right images are marked as deleted, but if I like, I can always unmark them. So I can actually keep them if I want. But this is the final stitched image. Now I'm going to show you how to perform a number of image enhancement functions. So let's go to image enhancement. This is the image that I would like to work with. So here, as you can see, you can, for example, sharpen the image, apply text dewarp. There's also a lot of other functions that you can do here. For example, removing the fingers of the operator from the image or cropping borders. I would like to show you how we can crop borders. So let me do that first. I click on crop borders. Now this you see is the original image and this is the image with the borders cropped. Now I'm going to add this action to my list. And what I would like to do now is, for example, go here and I would like to apply grayscale. So I click on grayscale. Now my image is in grayscale. And on the right hand side here, there are settings that you can see. So in fact, for every image enhancement function, there are certain settings that will appear and then you can choose uh, how to adjust them depending on what you would like to do. So I will add the grayscale action as well to my list. Now if I look here, these are two actions that I performed on the image. I cropped the borders, I added the grayscale, now I can actually reorder them. For example, let me pick crop borders, I will move it down. So now it's down. Now, as an operator, I have a choice to either apply these two actions just to this image, or I can apply these two actions to, the, to all images in the batch. And finally, what I can do, I can actually save these actions for future use, either by myself or other operators in the team. Now I would like to show you some quality control features. I'm a quality control operator and I would like to see the batches that I need to review. So I will click on open batch. Right away a screen pops up where I can see the batches that need my review. In this case there are two batches. I can see their status. I can also see that there are some documents or images that I need to validate. I will click on this one for this example. Immediately on the right hand side, I can see that there are nine images that I need to check. So right now I will go through them. If I need to, I can rescan an image. I can also mark it as blank. And let me select this image. I can also delete an image if I need to. So I will mark it as deleted. And if I'm not sure what to do with a particular image, I have an option to send it to my supervisor for review. In order to do this, I will click here, set to validate. I can add a message for my supervisor. I click OK. And that's it. Now I would like to show you how to add metadata. The system gives you virtually unlimited flexibility in defining your metadata fields. For example, you can add date fields, text fields, selection lists, database lookup. You can also define input masks and so on. You can also make certain metadata fields mandatory. So let's go ahead and use this example to add metadata. Here is my image. I will add a book title. Let's say Sapiens. 
I will also add an author and of course a date let's say 2nd of February 2019 I can also add a description publisher let's say Amazon and here you can see that these fields are mandatory so unless I fill them in I will not be able to proceed and finally the ISBN number okay now that I have finished indexing I can actually go ahead and review all the images just to be sure that everything is okay so let's just go through all of them now that I'm happy that my indexes the images are correct then I click on finish indexing and that's it for today thank you for watching feel free to get in touch if you would like a more detailed demonstration have a fantastic day.